ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praise is due to Allah and as such we should praise him and seek his help and seek his forgiveness We should seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds for whomsoever Allah has guided none can misguide and whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray none can guide and i bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship but Allah who is alone and without partner and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last messenger of Allah <coughs> ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the most truthful form of speech is the book of allah and the best source of guidance was the guidance brought by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion for every innovation in religion is cursed and all cursed innovation is a source of misguidance and all misguidance leads ultimately to the hellfire Brothers and sisters I invite you to fear Allah It is the beginning of faith and it is the end of faith I ask you to take on the responsibility which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed on your shoulders a responsibility which is clear in this country that responsibility is to carry the message of Islam to the people of this country When Allah told us in the Quran ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mau'izati al hasana call to the way of your lord with wisdom and fair preaching and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed us balighu anni walaw aya convey whatever you have learned from me even though it be a single verse from the Quran that was an obligation placed on the ummah as a whole we look at him as a prophet to all nations till the end of time but he is only a prophet to all nations through us It is through us that his message can reach the nations. So we have a duty, a collective duty, fard kifaya, to carry this message to the people of this land. Not to force them to become Muslims, not to make them convert 
but to carry the message. Tabligh. Balligu anni. Ud'u. These are instructions to carry a message. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that even he, as a messenger of Allah, his job was just to convey the message. Not to convert people. If they converted, alhamdulillah. If they didn't, the evidence was brought to them. The reality of who Allah is and what is the message that human beings were supposed to live their lives by. When Allah told the Prophet ahbabt," You can't guide those who you love. When he sought to get his uncle Abu Talib to get his uncle to accept Islam Abu Talib who had raised him after the death of his grandfather and his father who raised him like his own child and defended him when he called to Islam and protected him when the Quraysh sought to harm him in spite of all that when the Prophet وسلم, called him to Islam he did not respond he did not come though he knew Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a Prophet of Allah and the Prophet وسلم, wanted him to be guided wanted him to become a Muslim but he was not able and Allah told him you can't guide who you love meaning that simply because you love them that will not make them guided your job is to convey the message not to guide people إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ لَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ But Allah guides who He wishes. So the guidance is with Allah. Our job is to convey the message. And this is something each and every one of us is capable of doing. Many people think that the message was to be conveyed by the scholars. That is the job of the scholars. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Convey whatever you have learned from me, even if it is only a single verse from the Quran. anni walau aya. And everybody everybody here knows Qul huwa Allahu Ahad everybody knows Qul huwa Allahu Ahad this surah called Surah Al-Ikhlas that's how we commonly know it <clears throat> the Sahaba used to refer to it as Surah At-Tawheed it is the surah which embodies the essence of Islam. The most essential message of Islam is Tawheed. The unique oneness of Allah. This surah addresses that. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qul, say, Allahu Ahad. He, Allah, is one.
This is how we generally understand it. That Allah is one. However, if you have some knowledge of Arabic, you will know that the term one, when you're counting in Arabic, is not Ahad, but Wahid. And it is one of Allah's names. Abdul Wahid. But one is Wahid. Two is Ithnain. Three is Thalatha. And so on and so forth. Wahid. But here Allah said, Qul huwallahu ahad. So what's the difference? Why did Allah use ahad here? He's used wahid elsewhere, describing himself. Why did he use ahad here? Because wahid means one, but it is not a unique one of necessity, that number one. Because I can say, for example, I have one pen. Alam wahid. I can say that. But you can say, I have one pen. Everybody here can say, I have one pen. But when we say, Ahad, that means one like whom there is no other. One like whom there is no other. Uniquely one. This is the essence of the message of Islam. That Allah is uniquely one. The rest of the surah explains, gives more details of, of Allah's unique oneness. His ahadiyah. Allah samad. The one on whom all things depends and who depends on nothing. The self-sufficient. Everything needs him and he needs nothing. No one. Lam yalid. He didn't give birth. Walam yulad. Nor was he born. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ And there is nothing similar to him. Now, the whole world who are lost in misguidance, whether it is Christian misguidance, Buddhist misguidance, Hindu misguidance, Confucianism of China, or atheism. All of these various forms of misguidance, their solution is knowing Qul huwallahu ahad. That is the answer to all of their problems. The key is just for you to realize it and to share it. So when your Christian neighbors say, well, we believe God is one also. And we ask them, but you say he's three. Three in one. Say, but it's three in one, yes. We say three, but it's three in one. And we say, how can that be? How can three be one? And they tell you, you know the egg? Egg. The egg is made up of the yolk, the yellow part. 
then the white then it's covered in a shell it's one egg we say that's your egg theory for you God is like an egg for us there is nothing like God God is unique or they may try to explain to you using the water theory that water is sometimes solid ice sometimes liquid as we know it or sometimes gaseous a gas steam but it's still water he said yeah your God is a water God not unique it exists in nature the true God is beyond nature he is not a part of his creation he is not like his creation otherwise he would just be a created being like other beings like an egg or like water who is in need of a creator God Allah as the creator should be unique in his characteristics and that's why we don't accept Jesus as God because he was born he was born you run into all kinds of problems when you think of God as being born because if we look in nature when a cow gives birth that child of the cow we call a calf a little cow when a dog gives birth that little dog is called a puppy a little dog a cat gives birth a kitten is a little cat so when God gives birth what do we have a little God so you have a big God and a little God you have problems this is not God one who gives birth is not God Lam Yalid nor is God born was Jesus born yes there was a time when Jesus did not exist and then he existed could there be a time when God didn't exist then how would anything exist God is not born he is without beginning that's what makes him unique everything in creation has a beginning a beginning in time this is the message of Qul Huallahu Ahad everybody knows it it is the duty of each and every Muslim to share it because you're living in a land where people with regards to religion have turned off their brains intelligence turned off in regular life very educated successful but when it comes to religion turned off you have a billion people in India who believe God is a cow among them are physicists nuclear scientists you ask what happened to these people's intelligence how what you have studied what you have understood how could you end up 
worshipping God as a cow. Because intelligence turned off. When it comes to religion, intelligence is turned off. So what do they follow? They follow what their parents did. What their grandparents did. What the people of their community do. They are just following tradition and custom. Don't think about it. Maybe they do think about it. From time to time. It comes to their mind, you know. This can't be right. But the consequence of dealing with it as wrong. Going against your family, your community, your country. Heavy. That's a heavy weight. People run away. They prefer just to turn off the brain and say, do like everybody else does. Don't rock the boat. So, our duty is to wake up the community. Convey the message of Qul Huwallahu Ahad. That message is one which not only exists in theory, but it exists in practice in our own lives. Our own lives should be reflections of Tawheed. Meaning that if we believe Allah is uniquely one, he knows all things. Is capable of doing anything he wishes. Then, if he has commanded us not to take riba, interest, we will not take it. That is Tawheed in action. But today in our own community, before we go to talk with the other community that we live with, we have a major problem of clearing up riba from our community. Because the presence of riba brings the curse of Allah. The presence of riba brings the curse of Allah. Yamhaqullahu riba. Allah has taken all good out of riba. Interest. It's called now interest. By Satan. Satan brought this new name. Before in English it used to be called usury usury doesn't sound nice usury so Satan in order to make it more appealing changed it to interest because interest is a good thing something is interesting doing this is in your interest so just as shaitan tricked Adam when he came to him to get him to eat from the tree what did he do? he changed the name he gave the tree a name which Allah never gave shaitan changed the name gave it a name he called it Shajratul Khuld The tree of eternal life Allah never called it the tree of eternal life He just said don't eat from this tree Satan called it the tree of eternal life So Adam 
now is thinking about eternal life. He wasn't thinking about it before. About dying and all the other things. But now is this, this is the tree of eternal life. If you don't eat from this tree, you won't have eternal life. You will die. So now that tree becomes a must. So similarly, Satan is always busy. Riba, usury becomes interesting. So we have the job of implementing Tawheed in our lives, in our community. Islamic banking is a step towards that. It's new. We have the responsibility to support it. To make it a reality in our community. To pull ourselves out of riba and earn the blessings of Allah from following His commandments. And we have the responsibility of carrying that message of Allah's unique oneness to the community in which we live. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ورسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I ask Allah to forgive our negligence in these matters and to give us the courage to live Tawheed, to forgive our ignorance and give us the courage to learn our religion and to spread this message to the people of this land. Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Brothers and sisters, we have a third duty. That of learning Islam. Because there are many amongst us who think according to the way of Abu Talib. We think like Abu Talib when he was called to accept the message of Islam. His brothers, his relatives were there telling him are you going to disgrace your forefathers? Are you going to dishonor them? Stick with the way of your forefathers. Stay with the custom and the tradition. And it's the same thing when we try to inform some of our brothers and sisters about the true teachings of Islam. Those amongst us who manage to learn something and they try to share it because the Prophet ﷺ said, nasiha, the religion is good advice. So they try to share it and they get the response from people, ah, oh, what do you know? What I found my parents doing is good enough for me. Are you saying my father was wrong? My grandfather and my great-grandfather? They were all wrong and just you are right? This is the attitude. And because of that, ignorance is rife amongst us. Widespread. Ignorance of the true teachings of Islam. Because where did Boko Haram come from? Where did Shabab come from? 
or ISIS or these other groups, where did they come from? Did they come from the teachings of Islam? No. They came from our ignorance. By not knowing what the true teachings of Islam were, they took the words and the names of Islam, Sharia, Khilafa, Jihad, all these well-known terms. But they put their own understanding to it. And in the name of Sharia and Khilafa and Jihad, they massacred Muslims. Most of who they have fought against and killed are Muslims. How? By declaring Muslims to be apostates. Declare the Muslims to be kafir, non-Muslim. Now his blood is halal. And many young people in ignorance motivated by emotions they will play on your emotions your ignorance makes you a prime target shaitan loves emotions because emotions cloud intelligence that's why they say love is blind one of the most powerful emotions. Love is blind. It makes you blind. So you can't see right from wrong anymore. Emotion. The message of Islam calls to our intelligence. To understand. To know who Allah is. Qul hu Allahu ahad. To know who Allah is. When we know who Allah is, then we will not worship other than Him. And in our worship, we will live our whole lives in accordance with what He has taught us through His messengers. We live Tawheed. But we must have knowledge. هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون؟ Do those who know are they the same as those who don't know? فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون. Ask those who know if you don't know. If you don't know, ask those who know. Don't ask your father or your grandfather or your uncle if they don't know. Because they will only tell you what they have experienced, their culture and tradition. You need to ask those who know. You have amongst you those who know. Find out, know the religion so that you can implement it in your lives and you can fulfill the commandments of Allah. This is the ibadah. This is what is required of us. To worship Allah based on knowledge. If we worship based on emotion, then we will end up worshiping other than Allah. In many cases, if not in most, we'll end up worshiping other than Allah. So my brothers and sisters, you are on a campus. You are here, many of you studying, students here. You need to implement Tawheed in your studies so that your studies become blessed. If I ask you, why are you studying this course? And your answer is, this is a highly paid profession. That is why you're taking this course. You're seeking this degree because 
it will make you the most money that is your driving force what did the Prophet ﷺ say about those people who are addicted to money Taisa Abdul Dirham or Abdul Dinar the one who worships the dirham and the dinar the dollar and the pound will be wretched their lives will be wretched you will not find happiness ultimately in it so as Muslims if we say we worship Allah alone there is no room to worship the dollar and the pound the shilling We don't have any room for that. So your intention from your studies, your intention should be one of benefiting the Ummah. That's what your intention should be. This profession will help me to help my community. My fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, I will be able to help them through this profession and earn a living not to say you don't consider earning a living but your primary concern should be to help the community the ummah we are one community so this you need to check your intentions and get back to qul huwallahu ahad back to tawheed in your studies as students and with that focus you are enjoined to be the best because Islam prefers favors excellence Prophet Muhammad said in Allah yuhibbu min ahadikum Allah loves from each and every one of you that whenever you do anything you do it to the best of your ability so excellence is there but also importantly honesty needs to be there if we are about benefiting the ummah changing the ummah then we have to live lives which reflect the basic qualities of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and among them was amana he was al amin he was honest and trustworthy honest and trustworthy now if i were to ask you students here put up your hand how many are students here? Put your hand up. Maybe about half of you are students. If I were to ask you now to put up your hand and say, Wallahi, I have never cheated on any test or examination. Can I see one hand come up? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six out of hundreds. And what is the problem of our countries? We always say it's corruption, isn't it? We complain about corruption. But now, if we remove these corrupt officials and replace them with you, is it going to be any different? Or are you just going to say they ate, now it's our turn to eat? This is reality. How are we going to change the situation? We need to change ourselves. This is why Allah said, In Allah la ma bi qawmin, hatta ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is within themselves. So until we bring Tawheed into ourselves and live in accordance with the teachings 
of Tawheed, then we will not be able to change anything. We will be just like the generation before. We will just continue to do the same thing. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring Tawheed back into our lives, into our minds, into our hearts, and into our actions. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the way clear for the Ummah, to give us the knowledge, make accessible to us the knowledge we need to change our condition, and to forgive our failings, our errors, our sins, our disobedience. Oh Allah, forgive us for what has gone in the past. And keep us firmly on Sirat al Mustaqim, the straight path. Sirat al Ladina Namta Alehim, Ghair al Maghdubi Alehim, Waladdalim, Akim al Salah.